Wow, congratulations. You are finally coming to the end of this course and I'm so happy to have gone through this journey with you. We are discussing normal distribution in this last final lap. And I want you to be stay with me whilst we finish up. So the normal distribution is a very popular distribution. It's widely used and applied in many areas, many fields and, of life, okay? And it has this bell-shaped curve that is perfectly symmetric. So when we say X is normally distributed with a mean of mu, this is a grid letter meaning mu, and a variance of sigma squared. So the mu here, the mu here represents the mean, sigma squared represents the variance, and this is the probability density function of x, where f of x is equal to this, okay? When I say PDF, all right, or probability density function, what I mean is that this is a function in which you put in your mean and your value of x to get the probability, at the, the probability corresponding to that value x. This function will give you the probability you need for a specific function x. But not to pay too much attention to this, formula because really you will not apply it at all in this particular course. So when we say that um, the normal distribution is bell-shaped and perfectly symmetrical, graphically, this is how it looks like. Please, this is a sketch. So it may not look as you see it in your textbook in other areas, but allow me to feel free to sketch and do my best. So here we have the mu that is expected that the mu will be right at the center of the curve. Okay, so now this is very symmetrical and then um, it's bell shaped as you can see, it looks like a bell. When we say symmetrical, I mean that this line here, this line we are seeing, which I have also used a red to mark, it divides this curve into two perfect halves. That's what we mean by it is perfectly symmetrical. So now we move on. We now want to talk about a standard normal distribution. We denote the standard normal random variable as Z, where Z is normal with a mean of zero and variance of one. And then the probability density function of Z is given as F of Z equals this function we have here. Now, any normal distribution can be converted to a standard normal distribution. And then um, we have something we call the cumulative distribution function of any random variable. So when it comes to the normal distribution, this is its cumulative distribution function. It's just, it's simply asking us to sum up all the probabilities of the random variable up to the limit Z, which will be given to you in any question required. 
And in simple forms, you can write it as phi of z. Okay, this is another Greek letter representing, if you see this, it means the probability that z is less than z or less than or equal to. In continuous distributions, less than, less than or equal to, they mean the same thing. Now we want to look at reading a normal table. Okay, so there's a way, as I said, initially I showed you the PDF of the normal distribution and I told you not to pay attention so much to it because we are not going to put it to use. Rather, we will make use of a normal table. This is a very, um, a, a table that has been designed to help us to easily calculate probabilities under a normal distribution, rather than using that complicated um, formula. Okay, so the table gives us values. The table actually is a standard normal table. So it gives us values in, as a, in, a, in the standard form, all right, of the normal distribution. So we use a table whenever um, you have a Z value and you want to find a probability that Z is less than Z. Or you use, um, you want to use the probability that Z is less than Z to find a Z value. So for example, let's look at the first situation. How do you use the Z value to find the probability that Z is less than or equal to Z? As an example here, we are given the probability that Z is less than or equal to 0 0.43. The answer will be provided, but if in normal cases, you, you have to figure out the answer out. So let's go and read it, go to the table and let's see if the probability that Z is less than 0 0.43 is indeed 0 0.6664. So take notes, we are looking at the probability that Z is less than 0 0.43. Now this is what the normal table looks like, okay? The normal table, and we are looking for the probability that Z is less than what? 0 0.43. So first of all, you take the, this, left column and then look for 0 0.4, good. Then now you trace it until you get 0 0.03. So look at this, look at this particular um, number. If you look at the row on top there, it's, it corresponds to 0 0.03. So 0 0.4 plus 0 0.03 is 0 0.43. So the value that is at the point of intersection of 0 0.4 and 0 0.03 is 0 0.6664, which indeed gives us the value we are, we, we are expecting to get, 0 0.6664. So when you have a question such as find the probability that Z is less than or equal to 0 0.43, that's how you look for the value in the normal table. How about the other way around? If you want to find a probability that Z, find the value Z such that the probability that Z is less than or equal to Z is equal to 0 0.72. So this is like the opposite. You are giving the outcome rather, find this value, the, what Z value here correspond. And in this particular um, example, the answer is 0 0.58. That's the approximated answer. Let's go and see if this is the case. So in, in this case, you are going to go into the table and look for this number. And then look for those two numbers at the columns, the left and the left column in the top row that intersect to get 0 0.72. So if you go into your table, you realize that 0 0.72 is between 0 0.7190 and then 0 0.7224. And if you trace um if you trace this to the left column, the left most left column, most left column, I'm getting 0 0.5, okay? 0 0.5. And if you trace this to also the top row, you are getting 0 0.08. So your best bet is, and the most approximated number will be 0 0.58. So you're expecting that the Z value that gives you 0 0.72 is 0 0.58. Wow, that's what we have here, 0 0.58. So this is how you read from your normal table. Now, because of the symmetry of the normal distribution, which I showed in the pictorial form, 
the probability that z is less than negative eight is equal to the probability that z is greater than a, okay? Which is also equal to one minus the probability that z is less than a. Now the probability that z is also greater than minus a is equal to the probability that z is less than a. So this is what we are saying. Symmetry. Because of the symmetry of the normal distribution, this is possible. One, the probability that Z is less than minus A is equal to the probability that Z is greater than A. Great. So if I draw my normal curve, Z, this is mu. This is if it's a standard. Remember the standard normal random variable has mean of zero. In brass of one. So any number from here is negative. Any number here is positive. So minus a, I can position it somewhere here. It could be any number. Then a will also be somewhere here, okay? Because they are the same numbers. They represent the same number. So the probability that z is less than minus a will be this part of the curve. Um, everything to the left of minus a. And then this is probability that z is less than minus a. And then the probability that z is greater than a is also this. Everything to the right of a. It is probability that z is greater than a. So you observe that because of the symmetry of the normal distribution, this quantity, the probability here is the same as this quantity because they are equal. So the probability of the same. That's how come we able to say that probability of z less than minus a is equal to the probability of z being greater than a. Now, the next thing is that sometimes you will be presented a question, but the question will not be in the standard normal random variable Z. It will be in the normal random variable X. So you need to know how to convert from the normal random variable X to the standard normal random variable Z, because you can only work in Z. You cannot work in X. The table you have, the normal table is a table for Z, all right? So to convert from X to Z, you use this formula, z is equal to, z is equal to x minus mu over standard deviation sigma. So for example, if x is normally distributed with mean mu and sigma three, determine the value of fx5. fx5 means the probability that x is less than five. So how do you do this? x you want to convert this into a standard normal. So x and z is equal to x minus mu by standard deviation. Therefore, we will also it will be less than five minus the mean is two divided by the standard deviation of three. So this becomes z, which is here. And when you simplify this, you are getting one. So this um the probability that x is less than or equal to five is the probability that z is less than one. Okay.
So let's look at this example. X follows a normal distribution with mean of 20 and variance of nine. Find the probability that X is less than 15. Remember, I don't say less than or equal to because they mean the same thing in normal distribution. So we want to find the probability that X is less than 15. First of all, change this into a standard normal random variable. So as we did previously, you, you subtract mu and divide by standard deviation on both sides, okay? We're giving variance of nine, so standard deviation will be the square root of the variance. Therefore, the probability that X is less than or equal to 15 is the probability. It's approximately the probability that Z is less than minus 1.67. And remember, because of the symmetry of the normal distribution, this is also equal to the probability that Z is greater than 1.67 and can further be simplified to the one minus the probability that Z is less than 1.67. It's important that we did all of these conversions because the normal table just takes only this form. The probability that Z is less than something, less than a positive something, okay? Well, there are negative aspects of the normal distribution, but you don't always have access to the negative part of the normal table. So it's always good to also know how to transform it. So if you get a table that doesn't have the negative, yes, you will be able to um, still read from the table. So let's see. From the normal table, the probability that Z is less than 1.67 is 0 0.9525. Let's go and check to see if this is the case. So the probability that Z is less than 1.67. So 1.6 is here. And then we're going to look for 0 0.07. Tracing carefully so you don't miss your line. Okay, so 1.67. It's 0 0.9525. That's great, 0 0.9525. Therefore, the probability that X being less than 15 is equal to one minus the probability of Z being less than 1.67. This is one minus 0 0.9525, and then it gives us 0 0.0475. All right, so... This brings us to the end of normal distribution. There's another example here you can give it a try as part of your practice in the course of your studies. I want to congratulate all of you for coming this far in this course. I think you've done so well. If you follow through all the videos, you should expect to do excellent in your um, examinations. You want to put down all your questions as you watch this video so that when we meet in class, you can ask and we will also do practice and we'll practice quite a number of examples in class to deepen our understanding. All the best in your preparation towards your exams. And it's been wonderful studying with you. Bye.